ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. So it said recording started on the screen. So I'm going to say, Welcome, Angry Faithful. This is Nerd Sports episode 117. I'm going to hand the reins back over to David so that way he can properly introduce the show and get it kicked off. Are we sure um, it's 17 this time? Yes, yes, we are. It's, it's, we're, we're sure. We're, we're back on track. Correctly and everything. Yeah, he, he texted me afterwards and he's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I knew it. Right. production quality. <laughs> I was like, I knew it. Well, <laughs> it. I'll keep this in because you know I'm <laughs> nice like that, and I'm not gonna. Ju- but we'll 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 so head it up. Started here. going right on this show. The that we have any- yes. Yes. It, it's the raw, unfiltered slice of life that are that are uh, our our listeners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get a little every once in a while. I'll I'll go I'll go I'll. This is the actual beginning. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on episode 117, I almost fucked that up again. We're going to talk about Timber Sport. Oh, oh my God. After Johnny said 117, I just wanted to make him wrong. <laughs> they ended up making me wrong. Stop living in the past, Dan. I'm telling you. Living anyway, Timber Sports. Have you, have you seen Timber Sports? Live in the now. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you have you seen Timber Sports? It's where uh uh they do like uh, lumberjack shit. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, that used to be on uh on the deuce, man. Yes, yeah. Man. Yeah. And you'd be surprised the number of toes some of those guys are missing. No, I wouldn't be surprised. Dude, I've seen that when they're they got they actually got better safety stuff because they had like steel like uh, shin guards and uh, feet guards, right? Mm-hmm. For when they're like doing the uh, when they're sitting on the log and they're chopping it in half, yeah, to give you that extra split second of uh, reaction time. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I, I, they had a thing on. Um, you remember the the original modern Marvels that used to be on the the History Channel? Oh hell yeah! yeah. Well, they had one about lumberjacks, right? And they were talking about these lumberjack athletes and uh they dude we're talking they use like some of them have like stainless steel or some of them have uh like titanium axes and they are laser sharpened we're talking sharper than a scalpel yeah and and like the hot saws that these guys use man they're like three foot three foot bars or in some cases a four foot bar. And I mean, they've got these things, these, these chainsaws that are like fully blown, supercharged. <laughs> Tim the dude and Taylor out. And, and they run t- and they run top fuel alcohol in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, you get like one tree to the to the gallon kind of a thing, and it's Probably done. Not that. But yeah, I've I've been watching that here lately. I guess the they uh the sport the uh, timber sports are up and going again. <laughs> um, and that that stuff was always fun to watch. My, one of my favorite ones, uh, favorite events, is you know you, you you had the the pole that they had to to top, 
Yeah. Like they chop and then they stick a, uh, like a plank or something in there yeah. and they use that to stand on. And then they, they use it to, to build a ladder with, and then they get up to the top and they have to fell the top of this pole that they were on. Yep. Oh, God, it's just insane. But, uh, Hey, can we pause for just a second? Actually, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to mute myself. You guys keep talking. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, I don't have a conversation, though. <laughs> you know what's really sad, though? A friend of mine's been wanting me to deep dive uh, red shoes. Have you ever heard of that? I yes, I have, unfortunately. I man, <clears throat> some of the weird stuff that <clears throat> people go in and get get conspiracy theories and everything with, like, it's not really a conspiracy theory if it, the theories showed right. With like the one we did last, I haven't published was the uh, Sound of Freedom thing where everybody's going to the theaters and they're not uh, showing the movie or. Yeah, AC breaks down. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that one. I mean, it's it's well well documented. We've had a lot of stuff come through on there, but yeah, no. But that like, do thing. in order to keep any any part of my soul, I I I try to stay away from from getting too deep into that, like the red shoe stuff, like that. Like that's yeah. that's some some heinous next level evil shit there. Yeah. And if that's actually happening and no one's doing anything if about even it, half of it is happening. Yeah. Not even half, just one quarter yeah. of it. Fuck. Just yeah. That's that's evil on a level that, that you, you almost can't even fathom. Yeah. Well, there's this new document they uh he, he's been sending me called the uh Adam and Eve story. Have you heard anything about that too? No, I haven't heard about that, no. <laughs> I had I had him trying to describe it to me. I was like, "What what the fuck are you talking about?" And it's some kind of uh, document that was classified about some study. And let me see here. See if I can get a synapses. No, no. They oh, it's talking about the uh, uh, next cat. Cataclysm. Cataclysm. Yeah, that's supposed to happen. Sorry, guys. That was uh, some much-awaited news that we were waiting on. My uh, father-in-law got a decision as far as uh, his uh, next teaching job, so he, he's going to be teaching uh, in the Terrell School District next uh, next year. So this okay. coming year. So. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me, David. I've got to pull up my sound pads here. Hold on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> that is a real applause, sir. <laughs> God damn it. What did I do? Uh, anyway. Um, I have to, one sec. I have to apologize to the audience for doing that accidentally is showing off that Johnny has a soundboard too now to where he can press buttons and Johnny likes to press buttons. He is very good at pushing buttons, yes. Yeah. Especially the ones that don't touch that. What well, this one? Uh what what the thing? big red one that says do not touch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the big red one where you push it and it's like <laughs> Big boom. <laughs> oh, and that one was in stereo. It goes from left to right. That was cool. I didn't. I didn't hear that. Actually. <laughs> Anyways, sports news. Uh, we're, I forgot we're a sports show. Yeah, this is this is a sports show. Huh? It is a sports show. Oh, I did. Yeah. Um, baseball. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. NFL, NFL news. I just found this out. Whenever the Green Bay Packers lose a match, it's like forty percent extra domestic violence, and if it's a home game, it's like sixty. Just, I just found that out. 
Okay. See, David, if you're going to bring up news out of order, you want to make sure that you're sounding relevant enough by <laughs> using the correct terminology. They don't have matches in the NFL. They have games. So when the Packers have a road loss, their domestic violence count or uh, percentage in the Green Bay area or amongst their fan base is 20% lower than it is if it's a home loss. Is that what you're trying to say? No, it's more. It's more? Oh, okay. All yeah, right. domestic violence is more. It, yeah, it, that's what I – okay. Their road losses are less than their home losses. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Oi, let's have a game of American football. Let's settle this on the pitch, fellas. Come on, dude. Anyways. <clears throat> Fancy a match. Jackass. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so all right. So for the for for the longest time during the course of the season, we had the Tampa Bay Rays. They, they were kind of running away with the best record in the league, in, in the majors. Um, coming out of the All Star break, certain individuals' bats started to come alive, like Rafael Devers, third baseman for the Red Sox. Um, and it, you know, but Tampa Bay, they, oh, oof, they're playing Texas right now, and they've lost their last two games. Right, really? including a very embarrassing walk-off wild pitch. Like they, the the Rangers had the go-ahead run on third, and the Tampa Bay pitcher throws a wild pitch. Runner comes home, scores, game's over. Right, it's one of those type situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, right now the Tampa Bay Rays have a sixty and thirty-seven record, which is a six nineteen winning percentage. Yeah. To find a record that is better than that, you have to go all the way to the National League and the NL East, NL East leading Atlanta Braves with a 61 and 31 record. That is a 663 winning percentage. Now, granted, the Braves have lost their last last two also, but um, there's a lot of people now that that are talking about uh, the uh, the the Red Sox. The uh, Blue Jays, the Orioles, uh, they are the hottest teams in baseball right now. Um, the Dodgers, uh, one of the hottest teams in baseball, they've won eight out of their last 10 games. Um, and uh, <laughs> I have made it no secret that, you know, that this year is just not the Red Sox year. I've made yeah. it perfectly clear. Everybody yeah. knows that. Right? Yes. I mean, that one episode. I, I also have made it clear <laughs> that I I don't really care where the Red Sox finish, just as long as the Yankees finish behind them. Well, I as mean, of that, today, as of today, going into today's action, the Red Sox are not in last place in the American League East. The New York Yankees are by a full game. I was going to say, it's a full game ahead, too. Oh, yeah. Life is good. I mean, it's not, hey, we're winning our division. We've got the best record in the league. You know, it's not none of that. <clears throat> but it's the universe is in balance. What's, what's crazy is they're only five games off from the Rangers. Yeah, but here's the Rangers the are, are, are leading their division. And right. But as far as <laughs> I mean, okay. Like so that tells you Rangers, exactly Rangers, how strong the AL East is. Yeah. I mean, even though the. Uh, no, it is not in my pocket. Good God. It's not what I heard. It's just a Glock. I'm not really excited to see you guys. I promise. <laughs> um, even though every team, including the last place Yankees, have a better than 500 record, I mean, in, in far and away, 
I mean, the American League East is hands down the toughest division of baseball. I don't I don't care how you paint it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it used to be at least that you know for years past that the Baltimore Orioles were kind of the punching bags of the division. The Baltimore Orioles are fifty seven and thirty six. Okay, they are nineteen games above five hundred. Let that sink in for a minute. The Baltimore Orioles are nineteen games above five hundred. Right. They uh, they've got a six thirteen winning percentage. They're five and a half games behind Tampa Bay. Now, um, we're talking about like division leaders. We've got Tampa Bay, got Texas in the central. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, in the central or no, in the west. And then we've got Minnesota in the central division. They're, I mean, they're the only team in their division. I think that has got a better than 500 record and they're at 505. They're 48 and 47. They're two games behind the Yankees. Yeah. As far as winning percentage goes, that's that's crazy. You know, so they're leading their division and they're two, two games behind the last place in the AL East. Right. But here, here's what I see happening, right? We're going to get to the playoffs and the, the lowest seed division leaders got to play the highest seed wild card team, right? Whoever gets the Minnesota twins is going to advance. Yeah. yeah. That's basically a bye week. Like, it, it, almost. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, otherwise, you know, unless, unless of course, somehow we have some kind of solar flare where <laughs> the bizarro universe opens up right there on, on, you know, in target field. Where, where the twins play and the twins just absolutely dominate by like 20 runs a night kind of a deal. Yeah. And, and then okay. their offense, you know, their offense pulls LeBron and, and pulls up with a, with a hamstring cramp or a calf cramp, you know, playing a, at, at Rogers center up in Toronto where the roof is closed and it's air conditioned. <laughs> you know? They'll call up air bud from the miners. Right. But Okay, so here, here's here's the wild card race right now as it stands. In the American League, Baltimore, they are the number one seeded. They've got a five-and-a-half game lead over Toronto. Then you've got Houston at 52-42. and 42. Ten games. Ten games above 500. And they are the last seeded uh, wild card team in the American League. A game-and-a-half behind them is the Boston Red Sox. Now, in a universe where the Red Sox manage to outplay everybody, they go on this huge tear, and they and they finish the second half of the season, well, let's just say 10 games above 500 for the second half of the season. Okay? They're still going to have to leapfrog. They're, they're going to, what they're going to be, what they'll, in essence, have to do is they'll have to leapfrog either Baltimore or Toronto in the divisional standings to qualify for the for 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 a wild card spot. Hmm. The American League playoff format even at this point is so incredibly tight. The Yankees are struggling in there, two and a half games behind or are out from the last from, from behind Houston for the last wild card spot. The uh, Seattle Mariners are four and a half games out. From the wild, from a wild card berth, uh, the LA Angels uh, are five and a half. Uh, you got the Cleveland Guardians. All right, so just to t- kind of show you, it, it it would be it would be feasible to have three American League East teams qualify for the all three uh, American League wild card posi- uh, spots. But yeah. in all likelihood, I think Texas can keep up this pace. I don't think they can keep it up at this, at the, you know, at this tear, you know, uh, torrent that they they've got going. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's going to come down to like the last couple of like regular season meetings. Um. Yeah, they're definitely starting to show. Um. They're they're starting to slow down for sure. Yeah. Now. I mean, they went out and got themselves a Raldis, uh, a Raldis Chapman. Mm. And he's out there pumping 103 mile an hour fastballs. Yeah. So, um, 
So I'm not, I'm not showing any pessimism by, by any means. Yeah, no, I mean, you, there's no way that you can keep up. If, that if the Rangers that. are going to make any kind of noise in the postseason, this is going to have to be their year to do it. <laughs> yes. Because you can't go for as long as they have during the regular season, leading their division. And expect failure to be tolerated amongst their fan base or even the front office. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, it, call, call it. I mean, so, some of the worst fan bases, some of the most, the best and the worst, I mean, worst at the same time, fan bases in baseball belong to Boston and New York. <laughs> okay. And I say that as a Boston fan. I mean, even when the team is winning, Red Sox fans pages are just lit up with firing the GM, firing the manager, yeah. have a fire sale and break everything down to start over from scratch. You know, I mean, it's it's one of those feast or famine kind of a situations. And New York Yankees fans and the New York media are even worse. Yeah. But as far as the Texas Rangers fan base is concerned, it hasn't really gotten rabid or fervent since, you know, I mean, since, I mean, it's, it's been, it, it, it's been tolerable until you Honestly. hit 2010 and yeah. then 2011. Okay. But since they made their back-to-back -back world series failures, I'm sorry, losses, appearances, let's just what be more. There. That's what they were. I don't call in. I'm recording right now. All right. This is live. It's not going to get edited out. So I will text you as soon as it is your turn to come in here, but I've already explained. I have no idea where it might be right now. Okay. Life. <laughs> yeah. that okay. But as far as the Rangers fan base is concerned, I mean, you've got all these high price contracts, all these big names. Um, you know, I mean, you go out and you sign Corey Seager to this incredibly huge, retarded deal. You've got Nathan Avaldi. Um, who was it? Uh, 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 Noah Sing Sing Singregard? Is that who y'all got? Or no? Yeah, right? I think so. I can't remember. Anyway, big picture, he was on your starting rotation. And he's out now. Um. You go and you pick up Aroldis Chapman. Yeah, it's an that's a debatable pickup. I mean, because when Chapman's on, Chapman's on. When he's off, he's throwing 104, 105, and he's getting taken yards. So you know, it's just it's all about how much rotation and and, and movement he's got on his pitches. But I mean, that you got. I would say that they kind of took a modified money ball approach to it. They spent a lot of money on these other guys to shore up some kind of like uh, a generational contract talent. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say generational talent because it's just not. I mean, what I would be interested to see is if the Rangers are going to make any kind of play for any kind of proposed Shoei Otani trade because rumor there's been rumors out there that the angels are, are shopping around the idea of trading Shoei Otani. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and as far as rumor mill is concerned, I mean, that is in high gear because there was even a rumor that Shoei Otani has come out and said, he's done everything that he thinks he can accomplish in MLB and he wants to go back to play in Japan. I could see that. But um, there's actually uh, another sports news that's kind of caught my eye for uh, Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball takes over Diamondbacks broadcasting after the uh, Diamond Sports Group bankrupts ruling. Yeah, I mean, with the uh, um, like the Bally Sports, Bally Sports which took over the broadcasting duties for a lot of major league teams this year or last year. Yeah. They were 
It's like eight point five billion dollars in debt. Yeah, I mean, and and they were refusing to pay their t- these teams that they had signed contracts with for broadcasting money for for broadcasting revenue, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, there, there's a like a Diamond Sports deal with Diamondbacks was reportedly 20 year agreement uh, worth 1.5 billion dollars per ESPN. Yeah, and here's my thing, you know, this this needs to be a wake up call, and I know that there are a lot of a lot of baseball fans that are on board with this, but MLB needs to revamp their premium package. Okay, well, they kind of from what I'm reading on this, they kind of did. They they uh, said it would pay teams. Up. No, not, not that. It was well, here's the thing. It was a broadcast. If no, if if you've got a nationally televised game, okay. So you got a nationally televised game like ESPN, Fox, uh, you know something like that. They black the game out. Yeah. Right? Um, also, if you uh if if you if if you're if you live in that team's market you can't you can't stream those games over mlb premium you can't yeah. which which sucks because i mean it's based on your on your geographic location at the time right they ping your ip address and that's how they figure it out right right yeah i mean yeah you could hide behind a vpn but i VPNs anymore nowadays are just, I mean, they're more of a hassle than anything else, especially with the way that a lot of applications are written like Netflix and things like that. But if you live or if you're geographically located in that team's market, you can't watch those games on MLB premium. Now, as a Red Sox fan, I get to watch a majority of the games all year with the exception of uh, when they're playing Houston, because obviously Houston has a really great TV deal um, with, uh, actually, I think it is Bally Sports down here too. But, you know, but what I, I think needs to happen is they need to they need to cancel out. I mean, they need to get rid of these blackout restrictions. And because there's a lot of people like, we turned off our cable and we just have internet only here at the house. I did that. Like, a hey. ton of money. Like my yeah. cable bill went down from like three hundred and fifty dollars to one hundred and twenty-five every month. Oh, yeah, you know. But and, that's. I mean, that's the trend, almost nationwide. Like that's that's becoming the norm now. Yeah, it's, I it's I did that like, 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 like two thousand six. I stopped getting like any kind of uh, uh, TV station. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. It, it, and the only reason why I had cable to begin with was because I was watching things like baseball. I was watching NASCAR, um, you know, watching the Super Bowl, uh, the World Series. If I mean, because Fox has got a lifetime contract, basically, with the, for, with baseball for the World Series. Right. Um, you know, they're sharing uh, the playoff duties with TBS. Uh, they, they've got the all-star game. Uh, Fox has got uh, the first half of the NASCAR season. Uh, NBC picks up the second half of the season. Now, NBC has been pretty good because they do also own the USA Network. Um, I've been lucky to, to to catch NASCAR races streaming on 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 Peacock. And so, um, you know, so it, I mean, there's there's that. I mean, and Dale Jr. has even gone over it in his uh, Dale Jr. download. He's talked about it because, um, I mean, obviously he's got the money to do it, but he's got so many subscription services he can't remember them all. Yeah, you know. So what I would love to see Major League Baseball do is just eliminate the blackout restrictions. Um, if you've got a game that takes place before twelve o'clock your time on Sunday, you can't watch a game. You know, I'm just like that. That's how stupid is that? Yeah. You know, so um, I mean, really, the the people that get the most out of the MLB subscriptions are the people who live abroad, or people. Uh, well, like I would say Alaska, but Alaska, Alaska is considered part of the Seattle, uh, Seattle slash Toronto market. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, so I'm just like, that is so dumb. And, you know, so, I mean, just get rid of geographical restrictions, you know, geographical blackouts, right? Just get rid of them. And I mean, you can leave your, your premium package priced at like 130, $140 a year, which do you think about it? If you're just watching your team, you're watching 162 games for $130. I mean, still, that's, that's, do you can't beat that with a stick. Right. You know, um, I, 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 I get it for free every year because I have T Mobile as my cell carrier. Okay. Um, which I, I use and abuse the hell out of that benefit. I really do. Um, but I pay for the uh, MLB app, bad app, which is $20 every year. But I get to, I, there's no blackout restrictions on those radio broadcasts. So I can listen to home and away broadcasts for every game that's being played on any given day. And as far as like spring training is concerned, I can listen to almost every spring training game out there as it's happening live through that app on my phone. Right. And I love it. I mean, it's to me, it's worth the $20 every year yeah. for, for that app alone. Um, the premium package, I think it's still worth it, but I think that the value could be increased by eliminating the blackout restrictions, make these games more available to people. And you can, you know, and, and, and what you could even probably do it at, at, at some point as major league baseball is go into a partnership with the broadcasters, you know, these, these networks that broadcast the games, whether they're the local affiliates or whatever they might be, whether it be Fox, whether it be um, ESPN or, uh, you know, whatever, if it's Apple, you know, I, I know that some games have uh, uh, popped up on Apple TV, right? Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of like even they, they even, can go uh, into an agreement with these yeah they can go into an agreement with these with these networks or these these platforms and say okay if we give you guys the teams get to decide who they want to broadcast their local games right and you know you could still have your local broadcasts or whatever you can watch them on tv or whatnot but if for, for the people like us who don't have cable because it's either through necessity or it's because of choice, but we still have the streaming package that MLB offers, the, st- the teams can still generate revenue. The, the networks that, that put together the broadcast for those games can still generate revenue based on our viewership. I mean, they can still figure out the ratings. I mean, because if Netflix can sit there and talk about these are the top 10 shows in the U S based on review or based on ratings, right? One, two, three, through all the 10, right? Yeah. yeah. They can figure out how to divvy up revenue dollars from the, from the internet broadcasts for every game out there, regardless of blackout, rest- or regardless of, of, of geographic positioning or market restriction or what have you, they can still figure that out and they can still figure out a way to write checks. And I think that it would actually benefit, baseball as a whole because you you help the fans out there they're going to tune in they're going to become more engaged the only problem is right now is that major league baseball has an inept commissioner and and yes i'm talking about you mr man clown aka manfred you're a dude you're a hack you you have absolutely no idea as to what the hell you're doing you 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 get booed at every public appearance. Every time you step up to a podium, you're booed. And it's not because people want to just make noise. I mean, this isn't a situation where it's, you know, like Dale Earnhardt Sr. said, at least they're making noise. No, I mean, dude, they, they, the fan base for baseball, whether from any anywhere from your, your hardcore lifestyle fan to your casual maybe one or two games a year fan, or I just watched the World Series and 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 All Star Game type fans. They are sending a message that they are not happy about what you are doing to this sport. And I'm, you know, it, the bigger bases, fine. They're here. They can stay. You didn't shorten the distance between any of the bases because everything's still measured from the center of the base to the center of the base. So I mean, it's. If you're taught, if you're doing it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the guise of safety, fine, whatever. What were you saying, Chris? I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the pitch clock either. 
I was going to say, no, no business is going to fail by making itself more accessible. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't understand why, why there's so, the exclusivity thing. It's, I mean, we're, we're over it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's look at, about look at the airlines, uh, inter- airline industry back in the fifties and sixties. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was for the, it was for the rich. It was, it was for that upper or that upper, 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 upper middle class to upper, to, to upper class yeah, uh, income earners, you know, yeah, if you were wearing a suit or something like that, yeah. when you're going on an airplane, you're treated like a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, you know, you there's a dress code on our flights or you need to go find a suit and a tie mm-hmm. or ma'am, you need to have a, a dinner dress or a cocktail dress on it, You can't wear pants. You know, I mean, it, it was an event. But because the world essentially started to get smaller and smaller as, the, as technology advanced, the airline industries realized that they were struggling and that, you know, they were in danger of going under. So what do they do? They drop the dress codes, they lower ticket prices, they build their fleets, and they make air travel accessible to everybody. And surprise, surprise, they still go a little bit under. They well, have to, just because they have, they to, have to have the like, shit. well, yeah, that and they have to have premium packages. If they don't have the premium package, they don't make that much money nowadays. It's, it's, I, it was, it was like the, a, a guy, I, I can't remember where he was flying out of. He bought every ticket on a Southwest airline flight just so he wouldn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> I mean, I would do that. He bought every seat on this flight. That was probably cheaper than chartering a plane. If you, yeah, I think it still did. But <laughs> he bought every fl- every seat on this flight, and they still, instead of canceling the flight and saying, Ugh, Southwest woke up and activated an entire flight crew for this dude's flight. And the pictures from these from these. Uh, from these uh, social media posts I, from both the, 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 the flyer and the flight crew, they were epic, dude. Dude, like, it was because they had, they had a blast. Like they, the they had an they absolute had blast. Great. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the, the, the stewardesses were like, yeah, I, I wasn't looking forward to this flight at all. Yeah. But then afterwards they were like, well, oh. the guy ended up being like really cool. Like he ended yeah. up being a genuinely like, yeah. great guy. Like they sat around and talked, they played games, they laughed. Which, by the way, is hilarious that the entire reason he bought the whole plane out so he didn't have to talk to anybody, and then he sat there and bullshitted with the crew the whole way. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, dude, that well, is one hell of a flex, right? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, the dude just straight up was like, opulence, I has it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to buy your flight for one billion dollars all right so uh moving on into football news um was there any football news i mean they got uh, some... there was a couple of throwback uniforms uh, i don't know david was there any football news oh yeah that's right david was there any football match news today yeah was there any football match news fuck you no. guys just okay. fuck um, the Vikings are going to debut a classic uniform. It's a throwback uniform. They're going to do it week one during their uh, during uh, versus the Bucks. Uh, the Browns are going to wear an alternate white helmet for three games this coming season. Um, that's about it. Um, well, here's another football match news. I'm just going to keep on going with it. I'm going to keep that go- rolling. Well, that's that's the how that I'm going to talk about. This. I you're like going to keep going with it. it. Yeah. We're gonna steal your thunder. We we are gonna totally take away all of your all of your thunder, David. Because instead of acknowledging it as a match, we're just gonna we're anyway. just not gonna say anything to you. Yeah. <laughs> Franchise <laughs> trying to own it now, like he, like it was his decision. No, we're not gonna let it die. <laughs> French to uh friend <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> friend, I can't stop doing this fucking Hold on. Hold on. Franchise tag deadline yields no details. Uh, 
what's next for uh disgruntled uh running backs uh cowboys giants and raiders uh the deadline for franchise has players to sign a long-term deal ahead of 2023 season has come and gone and uh none of the uh three running backs who were tagged uh barkley uh jacobs and poland uh, reach an agreement of a multi-year pack of the three. Only uh, Poland has signed a ten point uh, oh nine million dollar tender. He is the uh, at the moment the only one of the three who has expected to report at the time for to training camp. The rest of them coming to, come to the breakdown. So there you go. And yeah, hold on. I saw something earlier. Um, Trying to see where if I can find it here. Now, oh yeah, that Dak Prescott, the uh, beleaguered cow- or Cowboys quarterback, uh, oh. he came out said that he's confident that he will not repeat the season from last year with double digit interceptions. He said, "quote I know who I am." Oh so, wow! Yeah. Uh, oh, and the Tennessee Titans. Like know who you are. The Tennessee Titans have signed wide receiver. DeAndre Hopkins to a two-year, twenty-six million dollar deal. Now, um, it is widely believed that the Tennessee Titans is the place where great wide receivers go to die. No, so that's we, not true. If that, we we shall see if that moniker holds up in court. But going on De- Dax Prescott last last season, he only played like half of it, right? Because he had he had broke his like finger. Or was that no? Last- he tore a ligament in his throwing hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's out most of the game. Bucks. Yeah, week one versus the Bucks, he tore a, tore a ligament in his throwing hand. He had surgery on it, and I I think he was only out for like he was out games. for like fifteen uh, games or so. Yeah, that's the entire out, season. Yeah. He was not the entire season, David. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. He was he out was for out, like he, six he weeks. was out. He was out out was, for like six four months. He was, out, uh, he was out, I think, for five games. Yeah. yeah. Like five or six weeks. That's a that's that's yeah. that's only five weeks, David. That's a so month. he was out five matches. He he missed five matches. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So NASCAR had yet another <laughs> plane delayed weekend in uh, New Hampshire. And it just seems kind of uh, it seems like a magic formula for uh, the eventual winner on Monday, uh, Martin Truex Jr. Anytime the last three t- three races that have been ran on Monday because of a uh, rain delay, Martin Truex Jr. has managed to find victory lane. That is so, weird. I mean, you can almost, almost. If you listen real closely, hear the black helicopter circling overhead because (laughs) much like NASCAR supposedly, quote unquote, rigged all the restrictor plate races back in the day for Dale Earnhardt Jr. because of his dad, you know, there was uh, there was somebody out there on I think it was one of the NASCAR subreddits that that was saying, like, Monday's Martin Truex Jr. Day, you know, like. They're, you know, this is supposedly Martin Truex Jr.'s last season before he decides to retire, and NASCAR is wanting him to go out on top, kind of a deal, or at least make sure that he makes the playoffs. And I'm just kind of like, Ugh. okay. Don't you think they'd find a better way of doing it if they were going to, to if they were going to rig it to make sure that he's in? They would find a better way to do it than. Uh, aren't all sports- only the rain delay game uh races to, <laughs> to, to have him go I, aren't all uh are all, all sports scripted anyways i thought that was like the mo no but there's the strike going on right now so nobody's there to write oh yeah oh yeah i totally forgot fuck oh it's yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay yeah, i mean through, through through everything all all the matches are all messed up now oh okay all right I I I I I understand they had to get like non-union writers now. And they don't know really what they're doing. Yeah, but you see the the the, the problem with non-union writers is that if we wanted any of their scab opinions, we you know or their lip, we we just simply pull it off of our zippers. I mean that's. I support scabs. I'm I I'm on public. 
blasting out to the world, I am I am pro scab. Go scabs all the way. Absolutely. Yep. I I will only I will only consume scab created content now. I mean, that is how we, that's how the world was blessed with the presence of Jimmy Falco. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Deanna Reeves came on the screen and goes, I know how to play football. <laughs> and you get Gene Hackman reprising his role as Lex Luthor going, show me. <laughs> Uh, I actually watched that movie here recently. What are you? Not skinny. Why are you? Yeah. That was, that was actually a good movie. It was That's a great movie. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's like, fuck those cops. You got, you had, I was like, what would you do when, before you did this? I was a cop. John Favreau. Remember what I said about Red? Forget yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You know what movie I miss and, and it was it was even underrated back in the day. Necessary roughness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I Scott, mean Bacula uh, aside, dude, Kathy Ireland is the kicker. Oh yeah. Bro. God. Whatever happened to Kathy Ireland? Don't answer that question. She's retired. She's retired. She just retired. She's still hot. Oh hell yeah, she's smoking. Are you kidding me? I mean, she's like, like years she, she was the reason I started paying attention to the swimsuit issue back in the day when I was a kid. Oh, oh yeah, she introduced a lot of us to uh, to puberty back in the day. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you could hear Lita Ford in the background singing "I Touch Myself." It's great. <laughs> Those were the days. Uh -huh. You know. Or, or as, as, uh, so one of the guys I was in the army with, he, he was not shy about beating off, right? Like at all. He would announce it. Everybody like, has that one guy. Going to the latrine, I'm going to whack it, right? And one dude's like, dude, how do you whack it so much? And he goes, dude, you don't choke it. You just, it's the thumb roll, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about, yeah, it's all about was... rolling the, 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 just, yeah, the massage and the thumb roll. That's it. Everybody has, we had a guy. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to blast his name out here just because I can. Eric Rump. We used to call him ass. He actually <laughs> had a fucking John Holmes penis pump. And was proud of that thing. And nice. every time, every time we had a room inspection, his room would be immaculate. And he would have that sitting on his pillow. So as soon as the <laughs> sergeant would walk in... He would walk in and just see his fucking penis pump on his pillow, and he would just look at him and then walk out. I don't think he ever, ever got inspected. We had a guy. Brilliant, really. We had a guy kind of like that um, named Jonathan English. Everybody called him E. Um, he was married and everything like that. But he comes back from the field one day, and the only thing left in his apartment was, his, was some of his clothes, oh, a stack of porn mags, and a bottle of Jack Daniels. I mean, his wife up and just disappeared like a popcorn fart, right? So he moves into the barracks, he loses all of his hair, and he instantly becomes that curmudgeon uh, porn. <laughs> I guess it was way, right? way, way too much about it. Dude, yeah, I mean, we were talking like he went from being calm, cool, reserved to calm, cool. And secluded, right? He was like Smeagol with his porn. He's like, yeah, right. You know, you walk into the barracks, <laughs> and the way that they used to be situated is you walk in and you got the common area right in the middle, and then you got a room on each side of the each corner of the quad, right? Yeah, yeah. You walk in and you look left. That was his room. The door to his room would open and would be open, and so the the with the door to his latrine, right? And there he's sitting there, jerking his dick <laughs> on the toilet. With the door wide open, and then you just look at him. You're like, "Bro," he's like, "Dude, take a picture." What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this yeah, guy. Like basic too, he was so was... E four for life that uh, 
he got Q and P'd because he just refused to be promoted. Like he did not want any part of being an NCO. <laughs> and so he had been an E4 for so long that they were like, dude, you got to get out, promote or get out. So he's like, fuck it, I'll get out. And then he found out like, I think six months after he got out that the army had actually expanded the QMP uh, requirements. No. He went back in as an E4. Dude. <laughs> and where did the army send him? Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Let me but, guess. Thanks. I mean, that dude was sham shield for life, bro. Oh, that's awesome. Like, he was the godfather of the E4 mafia. That's fantastic. Absolutely love that guy. I mean, like, you know, what I what I just thought was hilarious was the fact that we we had he he these brand new privates constantly coming into the company. And he had one guy, uh literally his last name was pronounced Hoot, H O U T. Right? Dude yeah. was an absolute Godzilla fanboy. Yeah. To nice. the point where he had his wall locker was occupied with, as well as different corners of the room were occupied with Godzilla replicas of different heights. Of different what? Heights. Height. Oh, Sizes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sizes, right? yeah. This guy had a full-on 1960s-era Japanese action figure of Mecha Godzilla. This thing was chromed out. And if I remember correctly, it stood like two feet tall. <laughs> you know, does, that and, as, does that count as bestiality? No. I, I, I mean, you think that that would take like a new in box value, right? It'd be more like hentai. Yeah. yeah. Especially if he was using the tail. Yeah. Like, yeah. Literally Literally a furry. Furry. like that's yeah. not, it's not a furry. I mean, at least he's not a furry because, you know, reptile. He's a scaly. Yeah. <laughs> is that better or worse? Yeah. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. I mean, if that's even a thing, it is now. Because, I mean, <laughs> you heard it here first, people. Bro. If you're into reptiles, you're a scaly. You've heard um, of Rule Thirty Four. If it's out there, I promise you, it's a thing. Right. I promise you, somebody somewhere, it's a thing. <laughs> yes. So let me see here. We are currently. But no, I, I researched Catherine Ireland. Yeah, she she owns her own uh, clothing line, and she's worth like five hundred million dollars. Wow. I didn't know she was 60, though. I could use a, uh, a sugar mama. So, as of right now, as of today, we are 10 weeks out <coughs> from angry me going to the races. Yeah. Fantastic. Dude, you have no idea how bad. So, I told him at work that yeah. I was going... And one of my coworkers was like, hey, are you guys going to the East Coast? I was like, no, we're going to Texas Motor Speedway. He's like, oh, well, that's too bad because I know people out there that could have hooked you up. I was like, ah. I go, do you know anybody at Texas Motor Speedway? No. <laughs> Thanks, that's Keep that floating point. it out there, man. I mean, dude, you're sticking up, you're sticking up feelers and probes oh, out good. there. I'm, I'm good. I'm just like, you know. Because I'm telling you, man, I mean, talking to even even if even if we have to sit behind pit wall and Noah Greg or Gregson's pit stall just for the sheer purpose of being there because of Black Rifle Coffee. You know how badass I would be? I, I'm good with I would, that. I would lose my shit. Are you kidding me? I mean, I hung out with I would sit in Ross Chastain's crew when we can. I would even sit with Ross Chastain. That's that's how awesome it would be. Uh, you know what? I'll give you this. Much. I'd hate I would, this I would, later, but if it was Ross Chastain, yeah, okay. But if you sat there and told me that I could sit in the sit in the pits, even sit in the pit box and have an all access pass as long as I did it with Joey Logano, I'd tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> Still, not, still not worth it, huh? Nope, nope. Because here's the deal. 
I would get, I would get in, but I would wander up and down pit road. And if somebody called me out on it, I'd be like, here's my pass. I'm leaving. How about this? You get a sit. You you have to sit in Joey Logano's pit box, but you get a headset, and you can yell. It's a one way headset, and you can yell at him the whole way around. You're gonna miss this turn, jackass. (laughs) Turn left, jackass. (laughs) Slow down. Jackass. <laughs> could you could you, you imagine your pit stall? That? Were you too good for your pit stall? Go home. <laughs> could, you imagine, could you imagine yeah. he does that and he causes like uh like almost a genocidal event with all the racers? <laughs> he gets so pissed off he actually wins. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> it'd be like yeah. wow, he's driving aggressively today. <laughs> 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 he'd, he'd, he'd turn like oh, a shit lap or, or he's like a lap down or something and be like <laughs> like why, why don't you let your hair club for men plugs get behind the wheel they drive faster than you are <laughs> oh my god oh man oh <laughs> Oh, that's the VIP fan experience that I want to do. Just sit there, <laughs> just trash talk. Oh, 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 fucking See, if we got to go into Noah Gregson's pit, oh. odds are, odds are that at the very least, we may get to bump into Richard Petty or Jimmy Johnson. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Two seven times. NASCAR Cup champions. Nice. Right? That would be right up there with... That's almost as good as meeting Stan Lee. I was going to say, it's right up there with meeting Billy Gibbons for me. Yeah, I mean, dude... Praise hell, raise Dale, or pray, praise Dale, raise hell, but it, the only thing that would be better than that would be meeting Dale Earnhardt himself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why? Anyways, mm. moving on. All right. Uh let me yeah, help you out with that with a plastic bag and a couple of ropes. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> oh, oh, oh uh, going, going totally off uh, topic. Have you seen all the fucking Coke Cobain stuff I've been sending people? The Kurt Cobain mm-hmm. POV? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the one with the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what with a burger? <laughs> the uh the uh what you see it? somebody actually customized a, a kurt cobain pop funko yes oh god no you see the spinal yeah. column sticking out and everything from the chin <laughs> up and down. yes i was like bro yeah, i'm not even gonna yeah, dignify yeah. that with a response i'm like i'm not even gonna mad react that i mean like you saw the you saw the uh the the guitar hero the the uh nirvana nirvana edition Guitar Hero, isn't it just? A it was just a shotgun. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that doesn't get old. I mean, just like Kurt like Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can dig that, man. I, I yeah, I, hey. <coughs> I appreciate that joke. <laughs> One way to get ahead. Yeah. 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 I guess. I guess. Let's get Colin in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm working on that here. Oh God. Oh boy. <laughs> Good lord. We we have pretty much already set the stage for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we have. I I uh I keep telling everybody and they don't believe me. I'm like, don't worry about buying a ticket for the bus because I'm driving. Yeah. Make sure you're on it when we get ready to go. Well, someone <laughs> someone someone asked me how dark my humor was, and I told him was like, well, fat chicks keep on trying to uh date it. So what? Fat white chicks try to date it. My humor. Because so so what you're dark. trying to say is that your humor is so dark that it dates heavy set white girls around tax time. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> All right, he's supposedly on his way, guys. Tell him. Be, be ready to go. Of course, what's he doing? He's got his, like any 14-year-old red-blooded American. He's got his hand in his pants. <laughs> it's the middle of the day, and he's playing video games. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, f forgot. Back in my day, that's what it was. No, that's what we called it. Yeah. Yeah, just because you spend a lot of your time choking. the Playing with a joystick. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. I'm you're going you're gonna to get a, a chair? Come on, bud. Figure it out. Somebody get this dude a puppers. Like, seriously. Fucking embarrassing. Fucking embarrassing. What? You're spare parts, aren't you, bud? You are so 10 ply. Oh, my God. It's Letter Kenny. Good God. Okay. So I'm going to give you the microphone here in just a minute. Okay. You have to speak into the microphone because this is now very directional. It's a brand new microphone, right? Okay. You're going to have to wear the headphones. So I actually may even get up and make you sit in this chair. Okay. Ooh, we get the full experience. Yeah. You get full frontal calling this week. So oh, Yahtzee. I don't know. Wait a minute, David. Are you allowed to do that by stipulation of your release? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. He just got to look directly. He's got to look off to the side. Oh, okay. No, no, right. no, I'm quitted. What? Too soon? <laughs> it never gets old. He is having way too much fun with that shit. Yeah, it's your fault. Yeah, I know. I wanted him to be part of the uh, cool group, and now he is. He's, like, really excited and pressing buttons. Mm -hmm. Okay, this week, Joke Time with Colin is brought to you by our lovely and generous sponsor, Mobile Notary Mindy. She does wills, powers of attorney, medical documents, healthcare proxies, living wills, certifications of trust, assignment of personal property, HIPAA waivers, advanced healthcare directives, I-9 verifications. She's also certified with the National Notary Association. She's bonded and E&O insured. She's on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, hit her up. She's remote notary, uh, remote online notary uh, commissioned, and she is going to start being or start offering those uh, online notarizations you can be anywhere in the country as long as she is safe within the confines of the great republic or the current state of texas she can do this for you so again mobile notary mindy mindy hit her up on all the social media platforms now without further ado i, I gotta do your intro calm your tits all right all right, all right. Kuna, you're taught us. Temper thy Okay. All right. This is the breaks there, Thanos. Okay. Hailing from the darkest, deepest regions, or reaches of my neither regions, my genetic code, striding in upon a valiant white steed, like a a ronin rising from the ashes of a chaotic feudal Japan battlefield. 
He is here on a mission without definition. He thrives on carnage and the ability to make you question your morality. I present to you the musings, however inappropriate they may be or not be, the unscreened jokes of my child, the fruit of my loins. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, angry faithful of all ages, joke time with Colin. Oh, no, because all the sound goes through the headphones now as opposed to the speakers. There you go. Look at that. All right, Chinese fire drill, everybody. Put the headphones on, guy. Screw there he on. is. There you go. You don't have to lean hey. in. How do you cure a ginger chemotherapy? <laughs> yeah, and I didn't screen any of these. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the don't walk light red? Tell gingers when to walk. <laughs> mm, mm. No, let me see it. Is that it? <laughs> what train are gingers not allowed to ride? The soul train. God damn. <laughs> Your older brother is going to feel so attacked. Uh... <laughs> I, yeah, he is. Oh, very. Yeah. Just, just that just makes these jokes way better. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it when a ginger gets a call on a Saturday night? A wrong number. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> what did gingers miss most at a party? The invitation. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go, guys. All right. Go for it. Why can't British people play chess? Because they don't have a queen. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh, that's that's awesome. What did the woman what uh, sometimes may be good, sometimes may be shit. That was wrong. Buddy. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why did Found the woman out. what did the woman with no hands get for Christmas? She doesn't know, she hasn't opened it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Uh... It's a... Oh, is that it? Yes. You got? That's all I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Apparently, nerd stuff. Apparently, okay. It's like playing hot, uh, hot potato with a quadriplegic. Oh, okay. <sighs> oh shit! Oh shit! <clears throat> <clears throat> unlike the former queen of england there he goes without all the pomp and circumstance without the drama of an expelled ginger from the family my genetic code has left the room it has left our lives he has left you Feeling empty inside, much like David, after a night at the arcade and the glory hole. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, angry, faithful, you have been privy, you have been privileged, you have been blessed with the inappropriate musings of my genetic code. This was joke time with Colin. <laughs> while we were wait while we were waiting for Collins, I was looking at this article. 
uh, from Google. Because they, they they stopped doing uh, drag shows up at uh, military air shows or some shit like that because they were doing it for a while. And then <clears throat> now they're saying now they're saying women and I, I sent you like the video of what these women look like and they're 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 attractive. And they're in there and they're in like red, white, and blue bikinis. And it's like, uh, how can we have this now and not drag? I'm like, seriously? This is uh, this it's, it's the well, if I can't have my thing, you can't have your thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's all that is. Yeah. Oh, like, no, how can we, how the, can the we, big, go ahead go ahead i'm sorry it's like how how can we you know have these women just uh showing their stuff like this why we can't have uh men do it too it's like because they're not fucking women nobody gives a shit you sexually they're, they're, it's more or less is like i can't believe we're sexualizing women shit we've been fucking doing it for fucking years well yeah. you know what's funny is the fact is that you get a lot of you know, a lot of women that are uh you know that they they oh I'm a victim of, of the matriarchy and, and blah blah blah. But as soon as you have tickets for Magic Mike, they go. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, that's not where I was going with it. Good valid point, but that's not where I was going yeah. with it. You, you get a lot of people that are like, oh, well, it's just misogynistic and blah 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 blah. Or you know, or they're a victim of the patriarchy, stuff like that. A lot of these uh, feigned indignation voices or voices of feigned indignation rather they have only fans pages yep. so aren't they really kind of sexualizing themselves that's empowering it's not sexualizing it's it's oh, yeah, right. yeah it's, it's, empowering. it's empowering yes it is empowering your bank account to charge somebody two hundred dollars to stare at your ass and your asshole yeah and it's also the same women that that scream out. It's like, I don't need a man. I make my own money, but I'm so lonely. I need to be held. I don't need a man, but it's the men who pay three, $400 for a pair of your panties that you've worn for 20 minutes. I, yeah, totally get that. Awesome. Yeah. So in nerd news, um, <clears throat> thousands of, and this is coming from the, uh, the verge.com. Thousands of call of duty fans are playing classic Xbox 360 titles. Thanks to a server fix. More than 100,000 players are online and playing the original Call of Duty Black Ops Xbox 360 game. Um, there's, they're also playing uh, Modern Warfare 2 and, uh, like it's the aforementioned Black Ops. They fixed the servers to where there's no cheaters. There's no hackers on the Xbox servers now. Period. Well, that, that'll, that'll last a week. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> Well, apparently Microsoft has been kind of ramping this up behind the scenes while they were waiting on the Activision merger to get approved. Yeah. Um, there are thousands of th Xbox, Xbox 360s being pulled out of closets and out of boxes that have been long forgotten about being plugged in and fired up. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a TikTok to where uh, one of the... It was like the ant colony? yeah. Yeah, I saw that one too. I was like, yes. But um, I mean, there's, uh, it's, it, it, that doesn't mean that thousands of Xbox 360 controllers are suddenly being, being, suddenly being powered on. Oh, yeah, it does. But yeah, it does. It, it's all possible thanks to Microsoft's backward compatibility support on Xbox, allowing Xbox One and Series S slash Series X owners to play these classic Call of Duty games. All you have to do is put in your old disc or even install a digital copy of the game, and all your 360 progress from more than a decade ago will have been preserved, including your Call of Duty Prestige ranks. Oh, that's big news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says it's not all smooth sailing, though, despite the thousands of people returning to play these Call of Duty games. Game Rant points out that there are some issues with input latency on the Series S and X uh, emulating these older games. Um. With Not Microsoft's nice. proposed acquisition of Call of Duty maker Activision Blizzard at its final stages, which it's a done deal because the really the last roadblock to that whole merger was Sony. Because Sony was like, well, you're going to exclude it from our platform and we're going to lose thousands of dollars. No, they Sony and Microsoft entered into what was called a, quote, binding agreement that Call of Duty was not going to be made an Xbox exclusive. Right. Yeah. And everybody, everybody that that 
that didn't have their head shoved so far up Sony's butt that they could smell the degrading, or the, 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 the deteriorating cesium left over from Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima knew that what is that a omaha uh omahammer uh movie reference oppenheimer yeah reference yeah i can't fucking talk you know this we all know this thank you chris yeah yeah which by the way i do really i really want to see that because it's really good there's quote unquote no cgi in that movie Oh yeah, yeah. They set off no, a real- what they said supposedly is that he set off a real nuke. Mm-hmm. It was cheaper. Yeah. I'm like, oh wow, oh wow. That's, yeah. But um, it's possible that we'll see these input latencies issues fixed soon. Um, after all, it can't be pure coincidence that these COD games are now suddenly fixed just as Microsoft gets ready to put Activision games on its Xbox game, or Xbox Game Pass service. So, um, yeah. So the fact that the servers had magically been repaired as soon as Microsoft said, yeah, this is a done deal, you know Microsoft has been behind the scenes working on it. Because apparently Activision <laughs> couldn't figure it out, but Microsoft did. Um <laughs> it means that they've been sitting there the whole time, even yeah. before it was announced. Just like, oh, you know how to fix it, right? You know, you know, it's some guy named Bob that uh, they phone called, and they, all he had to do is like flip a fucking switch. Like, have you tried plugging it in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell yeah! I know how to do that. Uh, uh, give me a paper clip. Some WD for me. Now, there is some kind of grumblings out of uh, the UK. Uh, UK regulators, um, they, they're they fighting it in uh, with the EU. Uh, the whole deal is like $68.7 billion. Right. You know, I mean, not only are you getting the COD uh, franchise, you're also getting StarCraft. You're also getting World of Warcraft. That's Blizzard, though. Well, Activision is owned, or is or Blizzard's owned. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So bought Activision out. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. So I, I'm just like, boy, you know, and you, <laughs> it's funny because I'm like, you know, I've been, I, I'm, I'm trying to shop around. I'm trying to look to see if, uh, you know, I can find a, a, a reasonably priced even a used or just find somebody on on like a facebook marketplace that's you know an actual human that's not trying to scam anybody um i'm trying to try to see if i can score my you know score myself a ps5 just simply because of the fact that i i do want to play the new spider-man i i, I do want to play uh final fantasy 16 when it finally comes out how are you having a hard problem finding a uh xbox uh, i mean a ps5 still no, it's I, dude. I don't want to pay it the full five hundred for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, dude, when you do get when it, I say, when I said reasonably priced used one, that's not a part of a scam. Ghost of Tsushima. When you do, oh yeah, the, that the, is the, a the, must. Well, I've got Ghost of uh, Tsushima, uh, Tsushima on um uh, on the PS4. Oh, gotcha. And and I've been playing because I've got a P, I've got a PS4 Pro. Oh, okay, okay. So I've been, I, I have played that game, dude. Trust me, that's one of my favorites. That, that is the, that is the Assassin's Creed that everybody has been wanting. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see a proper Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan. You know, I mean, they're talking about a, uh, a remake of Black Flag. Really? Yeah. No. No. Not no. That, that's not, that's just not talk. That's an actual thing that's happening. They are. That's been confirmed. Yeah, they are. They that's are remastering. Confirmed. They're remastering, remapping, retexturing everything. The, there's, it's going to be basically a next gen version of of Black Flag, and we're not talking about okay, we've got the base structure here. Let's just update the graphics. Let's just pump up the resolution and release it and charge full price for it. No, they are redoing the entire game. Nice, dude. That's going to be amazing. You know, I mean, just, what, just, what, I, what I find cool, like especially on uh, 
the ship to ship combat was fucking awesome. Oh, it was amazing. Are you kidding me? Right. Well, like when when I got my Series X, uh, I mean, I've been complete transparency. The first game that I I fired up on it was MLB the Show. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I absolutely loved was I mean the biggest difference in addition to just the fluidness of of the 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 interlacing and the way that the graphics just kind of flew right or flowed. Anyways, real time reflections on the batting helmets. Oh wow. Yeah. And so I mean I was digging through some boxes this this weekend and I found my uh, original 360 copy of Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I was like, "Huh. I haven't played this in a in a hot minute." So I installed it on my Series X. And before I could even get it to install, I get the notification that I need to update the game to be playable on my on my console. So I got a free uh, upgrade on my 360 disc, free digital upgrade, but because I've got the physical copy of Red Dead. So, yeah. but dude, a damn, right? Like yes. you can see reflections in the rain puddles. You can see, uh, you can see uh, uh, streams of sunlight breaking through the clouds. That is awesome. like the texturing on it looks amazing. Like, and I, I've seen it on this on the on the Xbox One. I've seen it on the PS4. But I'm like, bro, this game looks good. I mean, I know it's just a just a resolution re- resolution bump, but moo, bro, that yeah, looks so good. And it, and it made the game kind of like really more fun to play. I mean, you remember Red Dead. I mean, dude, it was fun. It was a fun game to play. Oh, absolutely. Still you know, because because I, I pulled out my copy of GTA Five because I was like, you know yeah. what, I'll just reinstall that and and you know play it. But then I I I, I was like, oh crap, what is this? You know, it's, you know, you you see that day glow green three sixty case, and I'm like, oh, well, what game is here? So I pulled it out of the box. And I was like, oh, God. And and when I did the upgrade to play it on the Series X. It gave me Undead Nightmare for free. You know, I never did actually play that all the way through. I didn't either. I mean, I I, I didn't even play it because I'm like, dude, the whole zombie genre to me is just so overdone. Yeah. Like, you know, Same. Colin, Colin has been watching the. I mean, he's been vegging out on It's Always Sunny and The Walking Dead. Yeah. And I'm just like I. Dude, I couldn't even get all the way through the first season of Walking Dead. I was just like, so I just I can't. It just it bored the dog shit out of me. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's not, I'm just like, ugh. So I'm, you know, like the last zombie really kind of anything that I played, um, with any kind of like consistency as far as like excitement level was concerned was Left for Dead. Because it had an amazing co-op on it. I did. Uh, I did Days Gone. I did find that one. I found a used copy of it for PS4. I just hadn't gotten around to installing it yet. It takes time to get into it, but there is a good mix of human and zombie combat in there. Okay. There's some stealth elements. There's some crafting. There's, you know, the whole thing around, you know, keeping your wasn't bike. It, wasn't there like a, you could build a, like a secret base at one point in time in, in there to where. Days gone? Yeah. What was that? What was that something else? Because there was something to where you could build a base. Mm-hmm. And someone had built a base like underwater and made like, a, they used like a couple of, uh, uh, fucking the the truck cargo ships, uh, car, cargo cargo can Oh no! Here, here's here's a fun little thing. Um, so my kids brought down a couple months ago. Heard about Dead Island? I might be. Oh, yeah, that, I think that is Dead Dead oh, Island. Island. I'll bet you. That's one my kids brought down uh, my old Wii that I had and somehow it survived the divorce. So I'm like, all right, cool. (laughs) Um, 
my stepson, my oldest stepson, he hacked it for me because the Nintendo Wii store, the the the, the Wii store, mm-hmm. is not supported anymore. It's right? You can't you can't buy anything digitally for the for the Wii. Right. So he he flashed the the firmware. He put the homebrew channel on there. Do we got Super Nintendo games? We've got. Uh, he's even got a PlayStation emulator on there. So he's hmm. so got an SD card with enough space. You know, like I told him, I was like, dude, we're going to get a bigger SD card. And what I want is I want all of the GameCube and Wii Mario titles, all the GameCube and Wii Zelda titles for sure. Um, you know, maybe do like uh, the, the Metroid titles. But then like PlayStation, um, definitely want to get some like Final Fantasy action going on there. Man, I bought, I bought, I told you about the uh, Final Fantasy one game, the pixelated one, the old pixelated game. Oh, for the NES? Super, yeah. Yeah. The fun Super fact about cool. that one is uh, our Final Fantasy one is Japan's Final Fantasy two or three. Yeah. Yeah. But so, what's funny, what's funny about that game though, is they have it set up to where you can like skip all the, uh, you can have it set up to where you can just, uh, no, uh, contacts and mm-hmm. run faster. I finished that within a day. There's a way to speed run uh, Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past, which I have the original cartridge for for Super Nintendo. Mm. Nice. Right? Um, but there's a way to speed run it. There was a guy that beat the game in like five and a half minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it, it, there's a glitch in one like a dungeon wall. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of exploits and stuff. You can oh, get. Some yeah. of those are crazy. Yeah. Ones. Um, but, uh, you remember the, uh, when PS3 first came out you had that big, like VCR looking thing Yeah, right? and it was 60 gigs and it was backward compatible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've still got mine. Oh shit. No way. Yeah. So, um, I got, I'm going to get some PS3 controllers. Uh, I'm going to reformat it. I'm going to, I'm going to clean it up and everything. Um, cause dude, like PS3 has some great titles. Oh yeah. And, um, uh, you know, like I'm going to. Like I've got, uh, there was one that I I wanted to play. I bought it when it when it came out, but I just never got around to playing it. Heavy Rain. I've never heard of that. One. Fantastic game. Heavy Rain, David, was one of these permadeath gotcha. games where you go through and you're it was a choose your own adventure mixed with permadeath, right? So you could play as a character, but if that character died, you didn't get to play as that character anymore, like ever. It was okay. So and it was long lines. Your point of view to 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 one of the other characters in the story. But it was yeah. There were there were it was intertwining. You played different characters at different points in the story, and and you're trying to find the you know the whole thing was about finding the origami killer. Yeah, but hmm. you can see like you'll see things like you know, you, something would happen, and then as a cop you would go in there and then you would investigate what was going on there so there were you you would have different insight on on things as go, go at such a great game i don't want to give anything away but my right. first playthrough when i played through i got the worst possible ending basically after the 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 killer got away everybody died and the killer got away free it was the worst, most depressing ending I have ever had in any video game ever. It was awful. Ugh. I still feel dirty. Like, I want to go back and play through it again just so I can try to redeem myself because it was so bad. Right. I remember just he's walking down the street. He's got his hands in his pocket. I'm like, dude, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like playing the old Top Gun on the nes like you get all you get lined up and everything you know and you got the guy you got the guy in the meatball he's like you know you know you're, you're good to go and then it goes to the cut scene and you <laughs> you you nose in onto the fantail of the carrier i don't think i landed that plane one freaking time. i landed it once the entire yeah. time that i played that game as a kid i landed one time <laughs> A kid would piss me off so much. I'd be over at my friend's house and we'd be playing. And I just end up, you know what? I'm just done. I'm done. I'm so done. 
so yeah, great. Right. You get you get to all you get all the way through the level and you're like <laughs> it gets so pissed. And it it's, it's your school last school life, school. right? And you're like you get through you got one mission left, you got <laughs> one life. You're on your last life. You, you you're just like, all right, I gotta land this so I can finish the game. Cause you know, if you, you didn't have a game genie, yeah. yeah, if you didn't have a game genie, you didn't have save points. Oh for, no. And you like it, it, I I I had my altitude was correct. I had, you know, oh your angle, your Are you serious? Speed. Yeah, yeah, dude. There's Come a guy on, in TikTok man. now that like, that's his that's his thing. Like he's, yes. he does live streams of retro gaming. Yes, I've and seen he's that. got people talk shit to him all the time. They're like, dude, I bet you I bet you can't land on the carrier. And he like he's got a maverick jacket and everything, dude. Like he Every sits landing there. pisses me off. He plays the top gun anthem while he's trying to land. Yes. You know, and Always I'm just I'm like it. I'm like, bro, hey, and he lands at one time. Like I've seen him land at once live. There's one guy that keeps popping up, and he, I've seen him land that thing five times, easy. Yeah, and, and no effort at all. I tell, I tell you, okay. So the the thing about NES games is that you could put in the cheat codes, and it didn't affect anything because we weren't playing online, and you didn't have to worry about things like achievements getting blocked, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I remember right, let me let me see if I can find it. What is it? It's the uh let's it's the see. only way I beat the uh the <laughs> original Ninja Doom Ninja games. Yeah. Ninja Guy 3. Dude, I DDQD on Doom, man. That was that was my shit. Do I DDQD IDKFA. Man, I still remember like Ninten Nintendo Power magazine. Oh, I used to have yeah. a subscription to that. And because yeah. I had a subscription to that, I could pre-order. Back in the day, because I thought it was the shit back then, right? Remember the top secret section that had like all the cheat codes and stuff? Yeah. yeah. But on the back of them, you know, like on the back page, you cut out the coupon and you could pre order a copy of the original Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball. Yep. I've still got my copy. <laughs> hey, he's. Because nice. I mean, it came out on my birthday. Oh, wow. And it, Dude, and it came like pre order, pre -order the pre order, the pre order copies. I think I've still got this card somewhere, but the, it came with an autographed King Griffey Jr. Super Nintendo baseball card. Nice. Because I mean, Griffey Jr. for me was, I mean, dude, he, he was like that swing. I wonder you, how much those cards are worth. You know, if I can find it, I'm going to see if it's still in any, any kind of right. decent condition. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I'm going to I'm gonna have it appraised. Um, there was a game I'm trying to remember. Milton Brothers had uh, an NES game, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let me see here. They had... Um, let me see here. I'm trying to see what they had. Oh, there, Captain Skyhawk. I was trying to remember the name of the game. It, you're basically in like what looked like it was supposed to be an F-14, but it looked more like an F-15 and an F-18 had a baby. Like super polygons and <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean the the box art has an F fourteen on it, <clears throat> right, right. But you spend the entirety of the game with the wings swept back, so it, yeah, yeah. But um, like the box art had an F fourteen on it, but <laughs> but the Nintendo advertisement that they would put in magazines to kind of hype the game up mm -hmm. had an F fifteen. In the in the in the advertisement art, I'm like, the fuck. So I remember, like, my parents they got mad at me because they they you know they the last game, the last NES game that they truly went out of their way to buy for me was the Hunt for Red October, mm. and uh, it took me like three weeks to beat that game, <clears throat> right. And my parents were so pissed because, like, that was an expensive game back then. Like, yeah. it was a full-on sixty-dollar game back then, right? Which I guess would be like going out and and buying one of the like ultra limited edition, you know, versions of game X Y Z, you know, kind of a deal, where you spend like two hundred dollars and you get like a steel book and artwork and all kinds of DLC codes. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember. Uh, Super Nintendo that month, or not Super Nintendo, N Nintendo Power. Um, did you see that? 
Mm-mm. Oh. I know he went out. I figured he needed to go use the restroom. Yeah. I mean, you got to go boo-boo. You got to go boo-boo, right? Yeah. Um, so, but the the, the, the top secrets uh, section, or, you know, had cheat codes. And one of them was invincibility, right? Because you could crash into... I was just checking something. See if we could just block out Chris's thing and I couldn't do it. Yeah, that messed me up for a second. I'm like, why are we <laughs> back to this microphone? I'm like, dude, don't do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, like it, it zoomed in on my nostril. I'm like, do I have a hanger? What's going on there? Um, <laughs> but you could you could crash into the side of the canyon walls and dude, it was it was horrible, right? But we were we went to the we went to the grocery store that day. And remember, like grocery stores used to have video rentals when you, they started renting out video games too. Yeah, and it was like a dollar and a half to rent the game all weekend, kind of a deal. God, I, I, United used to have that because the, there was the United over by. Uh, God, where was it? Was it no? Well, you remember where the United? You know, okay, so the the new United that's going in on their uh, southwestern camp, right? That used to yeah. be in Albertsons back in yeah. the day. Also, right? used to be Kroger's. Did it? Yeah. It was Kroger. It was Kroger's like in the uh, 90s, close to like 89 to 90s. It was Kroger's. Let me search that because I don't ever, I don't ever remember a Kroger being there. Albertsons. No, it was Albertsons. Yeah. That's what I said. Albert. Yeah. It used to be in Albertsons because Albertsons used to be over there where uh, the Chick fil A or like uh, where uh, Shoe Carnival and, and Ross and TJ Maxx are now. Was it Albertsons? That what used to be in Albertsons there? back in the nineties, the mid nineties. Yeah, because um, I used to work. And, there, and then they it? moved over yeah. to uh, Southwest Parkway and Kemp. And then when they left, uh, it became a uh, the the food saver. Yeah. And then they got closed because rats. And then United bought the building, completely stripped it out, and and opened up a new United there. But yeah. Um, I swear y'all need an ATB, but anyways, I digress. Um, so we they we rented they rented Captain Skyhawk for me. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm about to tear this game up, dude. I typed in the invincibility code, dude. I know I was kicking this game's ass, right? I was on the last level too. And instead of crashing into the side of the canyon wall like you would without the code the plane did a barrel roll over the top of the canyon wall, but it got stuck. Hmm. And it was no save points in this game, like no checkpoints, no save features. So you had to do the whole game over again. Dude, I was so mad. I was just like, fuck this. I turned it off, put it back in the rental case, and I gave it back to my parents the next day. I was like, I didn't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... There was one game. Like, there was one not? game. I was like, Ugh. There is one game that I had to I had to turn the game genie off just so I could beat it. Really? Yeah. And once you got to a, it, it was something weird to where you it it wouldn't let me beat it if it had the cheat codes in there. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, I remember uh, there was a game I can't remember who the publisher was. It was called Sky, uh, Sky Fortress, mm. and uh, or no Air Fortress. Yeah, Air Fortress. Um, let me look it up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Air Fortress. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, so you're basically kind of in like this uh, orange suit that looks like you have a tail, but you just did it. It was a really bad design suit. Anyways, so like you're having to go through all these different fortresses right that they're they're basically space stations but they're connected right yeah um and it's all it was a linear kind of a side scrolling uh left or right game kind of a deal right yeah and it was one of those you had uh Kind of like, uh, you know, those those games where it's like uh, 1942, where you scroll left or right, kind of a deal. Yeah. Shooting and you have to shoot things as they come to you. 
it was one of those, right? But like you, you had different bubbles that for power ups to so like energy and then and B for bombs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and there was one, uh, it was the, it was one level. Actually, there was a couple levels like that where you could dismount your light ship and then you could walk into an elevator and it took you deeper down into the fortress that you were playing at the time. Um, and dude, it just, some of the level, some of the level design was just so aggravating. Um, but like at the end of it, like before, you know, as you beat each fortress before you could progress to the next one, you basically set off a chain reaction in the reactor, the central reactor uh, for each of these fortresses, right? And it would start to explode and you would have to outrun the fire before it caught up to you. I think I remember that game. I think yeah. I, I mean, there was, um, there, there was eight fortresses. The game also had an, uh, a, a second mode where you can unlock eight other fortresses, right? And dude, yeah. there was so like I'm trying to remember who produced it. Um, who? How Laboratory? H A L L O B A. Okay, so I what I did is I you know living up in Washington at the time. Obviously, you got Redmond right there, you know, which is. Uh, where Nintendo headquarters is, right? Nintendo yeah. America. Yeah. Dude, I would constantly be on the phone to Nintendo trying to score free crap, right? Uh, and some, uh, we'll just call them enterprising uh, Nintendo power representative that I happened to get on the phone at like O Dark 30 in the morning. Mm hmm. I asked them specifically about this game. They're like, well, it's not a Nintendo title per se because it's how laboratories. And I was like, well, how do I get a hold of them? Cause I was trying to look for maps, right? Cause like this game was almost next to impossible to map out, you know, as a kid. Yeah. And so they were like, well, the only way that you're going to get maps is by getting to the designer maps. And I was like, okay, well, how do I get those? And so he gave me the number to how laboratories. And I remember this, I called them. And dude, like I was that close, that close to getting like, um, like cheat codes from Hal Laboratory themselves. Yeah. And then uh, the the guy that I was talking to, he he was like, yeah, I mean, I could hook you up with these maps. You know, I just I just need uh, an address to send them to. Right. So I mean, I gave him the address. And he was like, wait a minute, how old are you? And I I, if I remember I was like. Um, 13 or 14 at the time yeah and he goes so are your parents home and i was like they're in, they're asleep my dad's in the navy and he hasn't gotten up for work yet they're like he goes wait what it, 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 call back when you get your mom and dad uh when your mom and dad are awake i was like well wait like is there an extension i can get you directly and he goes no and then he hung up <laughs> I was so pissed, dude. I was so fucking mad. I was like, why are you kidding me? But, um, yeah, I mean, the way that the game played out, is like, eh. you just sent them. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're sending like kitty porn or some shit like that. You're sending yeah, I'm like, dude, just, just send me some designer maps, some developer maps is what they were called, actually. And, and I'm like, come on, dude. You know, because I like, dude, this game was the bane of my existence next to Blaster Master. Yeah, into my existence, and the only way that I would play Blaster Master is if I had the uh, the NES Advantage, the joystick. I've still got I've still got my my advantage. It's oh. upstairs in the storage room. Turbo buttons on it and everything still work. God, I, I, I'm that we were talking about this like a couple of uh, I think last year. I was talking with a friend of mine about they got rid of turbo buttons. You can't do turbo buttons anymore. Yeah, um, and you had you had the, the NES Max, you had the NES Advantage. The Advantage was the one that with the actual joystick. It looked like an arcade. Yeah, joystick. I had that one. <clears throat> but any Nintendo was like one of the first companies that tried to do the whole wireless route. Yeah, um, because my parents bought one. Um, it was Nintendo branded, developed by Nintendo of America, the whole nine yards, right? Yeah. You put you put the uh, the 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 IR receiver. Yeah, in front thing. of the console. And you could plug in up to four controllers on it, right? But this thing took double A's and it ate through batteries like crazy. Oh, yeah. And, and each controller port had turbo buttons on it. Yeah. 
to turn the turbos on or off. Dude, yeah, my parents probably spent a small fortune in double A batteries on a thing. And, and, and my dad, that, my dad got like those big, he, he got so pissed off, he ended up buying like. The like the big bricks from like Sam's of batteries. Yeah, yeah. He still does that today. He, uh, he yeah. yeah. If I need batteries, I call him because he still buys those batteries. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, this is of course the same time when the the original Game Boy came out, and uh, <clears throat> that was that was a battery eater too. Yeah, dude, that thing ate batteries like crazy. And then on top of that, like you get all the aftermarket peripherals with it that like lit the screen up and then you had the magnifier. Like if, if you had the Game Boy that had the, you know, you plugged in the stereo speakers to it and and you got the magnifier with the, the yeah. light, dude, your Game Boy went from weighing like a pound and a half to like six pounds. Did you, did you ever get like kind of <laughs> nausea when you were playing those games though? You get the what? I got nausea when I was playing those games. Yeah, dude. Cause you're like this. And then yeah. you, I mean, your eyes got so bad. You know, because yeah. you're, you're just hunched over and you're having to like stare at this small, tiny ass little screen. And then um, when the GameCube came out and it had, uh, you know, the Game Boy player attachment that you could put on the bottom, mm -hmm. dude, that that was a game changer right there. But uh, I had the same thing because Atari made like a, a handheld. Yeah, Atari made a handheld. Sega came out with the Game Gear. Uh, the right shortly because. You had the Sega Genesis, then you had the Sega CD. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the Game Gear came out about the same time. Well, it came out like five years after the Game Boy came out, if I'm not mistaken, because it was in color and it was in 16-bit, you know? So, I mean, it was like a, you know, obviously you had like your Sonic games and stuff like that and Echo the Dolphin, but... Which people still complain about that fucking game being too damn hard. Right. It, you know, the thing that I remembered the most about the Game Gear was the fact that it came with a TV tuner. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you plug it into the back and you like you could tune the TV station. You tune the stations in and you had, it had the antenna because uh, they had Joe Montana pimping it because like, oh, you could watch you could watch me play football on this thing. Right. Yeah. Like, ugh. But uh, I wonder if. All right. Um, just gonna let him know we're fixing to land this here. Yeah. He can scream it out. <laughs> Actually, we could probably call him on the phone. He can <laughs> well, I, that's why I'm texting him first. Um, as long as he doesn't come bare ass. Cause it's taco night. It is Tuesday, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Man, it's like speaking of bonus, I could sub for you on your outdoor. <laughs> like, but what you outro? <laughs> Dude, I haven't thought about that game, Air Fortress, in years. Uh. And now that we talked about it, dude, I mean, I can is see. He, okay. Is he, okay. Okay. Hey. Oh, there, he is, there he is. There he is. Sorry, I had to step away. Did yeah. you ever make it to the drop zone or did he, uh, did he hit early? Nope. Pilot <laughs> had uh, hit the X. All right. Well, let, let, let's land this plane, everybody. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for uh, watching. I'm David Dickerman. This is Angry Me. Production of Nerd Sports One One Seven. I thank you, everybody. You, you screwed up. You screwed it up again, David. Wow. Really? You, I mean, like you were like, I'm David Diggerman, and he this was, was like you didn't get even one of us a chance. Dude, to I like he was on a roll, man. And y'all, okay, like go. he was in straight fuck those guys mode. That's what he <laughs> yeah. was. He's like, I, I don't know what I was thinking. There's, there's Obviously, nobody else in here. Yeah, who else, who else would possibly have anything to say at this point? I mean, I don't know. Maybe the creator of the show, but you know, I mean, who am I? You know, it's really funny is if, if I ended it right there. I I hit the end button right there. 
<laughs> as I did that, you're like, I know you. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, 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 I you were that. reaching for it as Johnny said something. I mean, David straight drug his gas can out, a uh, gas can out to the pitching mound and decided he was going to burn the plate. <laughs> <down. laughs> he's like, he's like oh. pull this pin, pull the safety pin, let that thing fly, and then go, oopsie. <laughs> you ain't got to stay here. What is it? You ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. Like, he, he straight turned on the ugly Get light. Like, he's like, Man. he turned the sprinklers on and everything. Like, it was. Uh, uh, well, I'm David DeCurry. I'm Johnny Skelton. And I am Chris Jacka. Thank you. All the for other looking. two co hosts. As long as show. David allows us to be. Yeah. Right? Thank you. have been privy to, to David's <laughs> omnipotent. Smartitude. Um, and sports smart. episode 117. People, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted in the description, David, when you upload this to our platforms. <laughs> episode 117. Like the great Master Chief. Okay. Like, What's sad is I can end this anytime and I just let him come. Master fucking me. Chief, bro. Mm hmm. That's on his name. Okay. Yeah. John 117. Okay. <laughs> hey, look at that. It, it, does this sound like a phone hanging up? 